I'm going to show you how to make this sketchbook, which is easy, fast and cheap to make out of any watercolour paper you like. This is a really, really easy way to take just two sheets of watercolour paper and turn it into a 24 page plus watercolour sketchbook. These sketchbooks also have additional pages, so it's not just the 24 main pages that measure 10 inches by 8 inches, but you also get lots of these extra pages. And some of them are quite big. So the smaller ones are really good for doing little swatches and color testing to make sure your colors are right. And then these pages are great for doing little sketches in. Now the 24 pages does not include these extra fold out pages. If you do include these little pages, then you actually get 42 pages sketchbook out of just two full imperial watercolor sheets. So let's get making and I'll show you how cheap, easy and fast making this kind of sketchbook is. You only need a few things to make this watercolor sketchbook. And the first thing you'll need is the paper. Here I have two sheets of watercolor paper. It is a full imperial size, which is usually about 30 inches the long way and then 22 inches this way. The awesome thing about this sketchbook is that you can use any watercolor paper you like. Here I have chosen a 190 GSM or 19 pounds watercolor paper. I've chosen Bockingford because that's what I have on hand. If you want like a proper sketchbook, reasonably thin papers, then 190 GSM is fantastic. But you can also use a 300 GSM or 140 pounds paper as well, and they work just as great. Just bear in mind that if the sketchbook lying flat is important to you, then the heavier the paper and the more number of sheets of paper you add, the less likely it's going to lie completely flat. So if you want a sketchbook that lies completely flat and you want lots of pages in that, then I highly recommend the 190 GSM. Other things you're going to need are rulers, preferably ones with inches, a pair of scissors, an awl, which is going to create the holes that you're going to need, a book binding thread, waxed thread and a book binding needle. This is just your standard book binding needle. Now the book binding thread needle and the awl is really really cheap to get hold of and if you look at any book binding website they should have a good selection of these for you. Because watercolour sheets, the imperial sizes are usually about the 30 inches, what we're going to do is cut this sheet into three strips of paper all of which are going to be 10 inches wide. So what you want to do is at the edge of the paper, you just want to measure 10 inches, mark it across, and another 10 inches, mark it across. And if you want to save time, just slide the top sheet down a little bit so you have a thin lip of the top sheet, and then you just mark 10 inches on both like this, and it just saves you a whole bunch of time. And then you want to do that on the other side. Slide your paper a little bit again. Now I have a big paper trimmer that can just take care of this whole strip in one go. So I don't need to draw a line across here. I'll just match the two edges together on the blade and just cut it off. But if you are using a pair of scissors, it's really good idea to just draw a line at the 10 inch marks to connect the two marks you've made and then use that as a guide for you to cut with your scissors. So you should end up with six sheets of watercolour paper, 22 inches wide by 10 inches tall. If you don't want all the folding pages, 
in your sketchbook and you just want a straight sketchbook then all you need to do at this stage or the stage before is cut six inches off which will leave you with a 16 inch wide sheet that will fold into eight inch wide pages but i like to make the most out of all the papers i have so i'm going to go with having all the extra folded pages for this sketchbook at this stage we are going to start marking where the center of the fold is going to be and also where the side pages that are going to fold are going to start from i'm going to show you two settings how many of each one you do is entirely up to you i'm just going to do a mix for this sketchbook the first one i'm going to show you is the ones with the narrow folded pages to the side and that one's really easy you take a sheet of paper you mark the middle of the page which should be because this is 22 inches wide be at 11 inches now because we want the sketchbook to be eight inches wide so up to here we go back eight inches to three inches from the edge of the paper and just mark that off and then we just flip over and mark three inches here as well so it's going to be three inches from either side and then 11 inches at the middle and then we can just fold it at those marks I did forget to say on the supply list that a bone folder is really handy for this because you are going to get nice, neat, crisp lines if you use one of these. You don't have to have it, but it is really handy. And I'm going to do the same on the other marking that I have of the three inches from the edge. And then we have one sheet of paper. It's going to be two big sketchbook pages with two additional side folds. Next thing I'm going to show you is the one with the big side panel in one of the pages. With this one on one side of the sketchbook, you are going to have no folds on the page. And then on the other side of the sketchbook, you are going to have the eight inch wide page and then the extra large fold. For that, what we want to do is just mark out eight inches for this side, another eight inches for this side, and that's it. The leftover is what will become the big fold. And again, we fold the sheets at where we marked at the eight and 16 inch. So that's at the eight inches and I've got the other one at 16 inch. So I'll fold that as well. So then we're going to have one page that has no fold on the end. And then we're going to have another page with this big fold on the page as well. So that's two ways of folding each sheet. How many of each style you have is completely up to you. To keep it simple, I'm just gonna do half and half. So three sheets that are of this style with the narrow fold and then three sheets that has the big folded pages. So now I have three sheets that have narrow width folded pages and three sheets that have the big folded pages. Which order you put these pages in is up to you. I'm just gonna do narrow page, then a wide page, a narrow page, then a wide page and carrying on. So I'm gonna start with a narrow page, put a wide page on, then a narrow page. I'm gonna put a wide page on, but this time I'm gonna flip it over so that the big fold is on this side of the sketchbook. And a narrow page, and then a wide page and you just need to line the fold together so they sit nicely with each other if you find that the pages move about and it's a little bit cumbersome then this is a great point to just put a binder clip here here and here here to keep the pages all together if you do do the binder then just to keep the binder from marking your paper i do like to put a piece of tissue to protect the page and then put the binder clip on 
So you can protect it like this if you feel that this is going to be more secure for you. The next thing we're going to do is mark where the five holes are going to go. For this, we just mark the page that is going to sit in the middle of the book. So we're only going to bother marking this one because we don't have that many sheets. It shouldn't be a problem to just go through the whole thing with an owl. If you have more pages, then you might want to break it down into two lots to do. To mark the innermost page, which is this page, we're having five holes, it's 10 inches wide. Easiest thing to do for the first hole certainly is to just go into the middle of this line, which is going to be a five inch. And it's nice to have a hole at one inch in on either side. So let's do that. And then we just go somewhere in the middle. We have four inches here. So if we just go two inches from this top hole, that will do us very nicely. So from the top of the paper, I've made a mark one inch down, three inch down, five inch down, seven inch down and nine. So just mark all the odd numbers of inches and you'll be fine. Now we're going to make holes through where we marked on the middle page through all of the pages. Two things to bear in mind. This thing, the owl is very, very sharp. So you really want to be careful where you put your fingers. Basically, because we're going to go through the fold, we're going to put the owl through here. Don't put your fingers on the fold. Hold it on either side of the fold, but never put your finger on the fold at all because you're not going to know where that O is going to come out of. Second thing is it's really important at this stage to keep the pages together nice and steady. So either keep a tight grip on your pages or use the binders like I showed you earlier. So we're going to start making holes in the five places we marked in the fold, which order you do them is entirely up to you. Just be very careful and steady. Take it nice and slow. You don't have to rush this. I am going to go through the middle of the book first. So holding the paper really tight, place it all where you marked it. And if you just fold over the pages, so you just have the outside of the sketchbook, if you just gently press it, Make sure that it's not slipping if it feels like it's slipping. If you just wiggle your hand like this in there, sometimes you need a little bit more coaxing, but there you go. You get a nice hole and push the hole all the way through so all the holes through all the layers have a nice big hole through them. I'm gonna do the next one again, place the hole. Make sure your fingers are not going to be on it and then just start wiggling. You do need a little bit of push for this. And then the next one, this one you really have to be careful with your fingers because it's right where your hand is. Make sure your finger isn't in the way and just do lots of wiggling. And then you just carry on making all the holes. I do find it easier at this point for doing these two holes to just flip the sketchbook over so I have a good grip on the side of the sketchbook that I'm actually making the holes through. Now the last stage is the one where we just have to keep our heads on as to how we're going to do it and for this stage you're going to need a book binding thread and a book binding needle. Now the thread is going to go from the middle, go up, go down and then come back. So that's at least two lengths. To make sure I have enough of the book binding thread for the sketchbook, I like to measure out at least three times the height of the sketchbook. And because the threads are very cheap, I usually like to just throw in an extra as well. So that's one. two, three, and then I just wind a little bit extra just to be on the safe side. Trim that off. And then we just thread it into our book binding needle. 
There we go. That is the needle and thread ready. Now the actual binding bit is the bit that's going to need the most concentration and so every time I bind a sketchbook I always look this diagram up. I will make this diagram available for you over on my Patreon but if you also just google book binding five holes you will find this in Google no problem. And this diagram is really important because it's going to show us which holes we're going to go in which order from which side of the sketchbook. So this diagram is basically like this. You have the sketchbook. This side is the inside of the sketchbook. So if you imagine you have your sketchbook like this, this is the outside of the sketchbook. This is the inside of the sketchbook. Same thing here. And then the holes are one, two, three, four, five, or the other way around one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't really matter which way around, as long as we make sure that we keep the numbering consistent. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I am going to mark the holes one, two, three, four, five. So you can see which hole I'm going to go through. But obviously you don't have to do that when you're making this at home. So we get the needle and thread ready. You don't have to knot the end at all. So what we're going to do, this is the outside of the sketchbook. This is the inside of the sketchbook. We're going to go through hole number three, the middle hole, from the outside in. Then we're going to come out of the hole four to the outside. Go back in through hole five, come out again through hole four, and then we do a little leap jump. We ignore number three. Then we're going to go in from the outside through number two, and then come out of the sketchbook through number one, go back through number two, and then back out of number three. Don't worry if you don't remember all that, that's what this diagram is for. Have this out handy so you can always keep track of where you are. So I'm going to go through number three first, make sure I have hold of the middle page. You go through number three and you just want to make sure you actually go through all the pages like that and pull through. but. Instead of knotting, we just keep hold of this little tag. You can just tape it to the side if you want, if that is easier for you. But I just, I'm just fine by just leaving a little tail out like this. Now we've gone through number three, so we're now gonna come out of number four. That was three, so this is number four, so we're gonna come go out of number four. You do have to sometimes do a little bit of a wiggle with your needle to get all the holes lined up again. So don't worry if you have to do that out of number four. Now just keep hold of this loose thread so it doesn't go out and off somewhere else. So we've just done three and four out here. We go through number five. That's number five. If you're really struggling, just look from down the sketchbook like this. And you should be able to see where your needles are going through on each page. Now make sure you've got hold of that end again. And pull that tight. We've gone in through five, so we need to come out of four. That's five, that's four, so we're going to go out of here. Number four, pull that re really tight, holding on to this end. Now we come out of four, we're going to jump over number three and go to number two. So we're going to skip number three and go into number two. That won't went through easy. And pull that tight and just make sure you've got the end. Pull that tight. We've gone in through two, so we come out through number one. That is here. 
we come out of number one just hold on to this end pull that really tight come out on number one we're gonna go through we're gonna go in through number two pull it tight again and then finally we're gonna come out of number three so that's the middle one there we go now remember halfway through we skipped from four to two and we have this longer thread now I like to have this neatly tied down so all I make sure to do that is to make sure one thread or the loose end ends up on one side of this long loose thread and then I make sure that the other thread ends up on the other side so it's like this and then when we come to knot it we'll knot it over this loose thread and then everything will be neat and tidy but before we do that we just want to make sure that everything is pulled as tightly as possible so just make sure everything is nice and tight and then we just do a simple knot I just do like a triple knot you can add like beads to this thread if you like and then we just trim that excess thread off and that is your sketchbook bound and finished now if at this point you feel like it's not sitting totally flat just take your bone folder and just go over all the folds again and that should help it sit nicely and that's how you make a really quick really easy to do lie flat sketchbook that is made out of the exact watercolor paper you like using I hope this video was useful to you and it inspires you to go out and make your own sketchbook. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!